This is the new 500 meter diver from Notice Watches. It's called the Sector Deep and the retail price is $575. Now this has very nice bezel action, a good mechanical feel that is not too loud, it's not too quiet, and most importantly, there is no back play. I think finding back play in a bezel on a dive watch is one of the more unsatisfying experiences as a watch collector. So the tactile feel of this one is one of the stronger positives of the sector deep. The bezel is DLC treated and also fully loomed with Superluminova C1X1 grade that will glow a cyan blue color in low light or no light conditions. And here is where things get a little interesting. The size, the wearability is a bit of an oddity. The case is 38 millimeters in diameter with a smooth matte finish. And there is a fairly short lug to lug distance of 47 millimeters, but this DLC bezel is 42 millimeters, which really plays larger. And if we take a look at the side profile, this difference really stands out. This flare out, the nice thing is it aids in the usability of the bezel, which again carries the nice action. So if you're wearing gloves or perhaps diving in cold water conditions, I think you'll like this setup. Because of the bezel flare, it makes the watch wear larger than the 38 millimeter case would suggest, but definitely not as substantive as a 42 millimeter case would wear. So I think I split the difference here. It feels like a true 40 millimeter. And just for reference, for a comparison, here it is next to my 40 mil maxi case Submariner. Now I look at this notice and I, I know it's an oxymoronic statement, but it feels like a large little watch or perhaps a little large watch. Uh, nonetheless, it is a unique fit that should work well on a wide range of collectors wrists. Let's talk about the design. It's very austere very toolish. And I, I look at this and I notice the matte finishing. I notice the all black bezel. And that reminds me of some Zen models. And Zen is just about the most austere and toolish watch brand on the market. Now, I like the fact that Notice went with a left-hand drive execution on the case and crown. I, I think in my opinion, it would still work fine if the crown was placed at the traditional three o'clock position, but making this a left-hand drive in that pairing of the smaller case and flared bezel, it emphasizes the uniqueness and that strengthens the overall proposition. But at the same time, there is a subtle line to toe as a brand to keep that successful and not make it become a wild card watch or a watch design that's just a little bit too quirky or out there and that prevents it from being a daily type driver. Now let's take a look at the bracelet. This is likewise matte finished. The width at the clasp is 18 millimeters. The width up at the quick release uh, end links is 20. So there is a two millimeter taper and you will notice Notice's new Node X clasp. This is a hidden micro extension system on the reverse of the milled clasp. So you push this button labeled Node X and you release the travel. There are two positions that keep the extension hidden under the clasp. And then the last two positions that really uh, add to the travel, those are visible. And I think that uh, I think that's appropriate for use over a wetsuit when you dive, but it will look uncomely in appearance for casual use on say, you know, like a hot summer day when your wrist expands. Now let's round out the other details of the bracelet. We have screw pin connecting links, an inverted end link style that will keep the effective lug to lug dimension wearable and usable. And there is a pleasant execution of flush twin triggers on the milled deployant that releases the clasp. In between those twin triggers is a notice signature. But let's go in on the dial now on a macro level. You will see a matte black color, a blackout date wheel, and a uh, red accent on the deep printing. I like the high contrast white hands and markers. And I think here is where I see some other elements that remind me of other brands. The pointer style hands are a little Seiko-esque, and I don't think that is a bad thing. The square markers notched into the chapter ring, in my opinion, is a little Pelagos-esque. So again, not a bad thing. I don't feel as if this watch is a direct homage 
to any other model or brand, but I do see elements that remind me of Zinn, Tudor, and Seiko. The movement within the case is a Seiko made NH35 that notice regulates to tighter tolerances than what you get stock from Seiko. These sector deep models will be accurate to a window of plus or minus 10 seconds per day, which is a significant improvement over the stock specs, which really are not impressive from Seiko. There is also another slight improvement with the inclusion of anti-magnetic properties. The watch will be resistant to a threshold of 4,800 amperes per meter, which will meet the requirements for ISO 764 standards of being anti-magnetic. Now let's talk about the pros and cons as I wrap up this video, and I'll start with the positive. I like the size. It is a larger wearing small watch or a smaller wearing large watch, a little bit of an oxymoronic statement again, but I like the toolish nature. I like the fit. I like the loom. I really like the bezel action, and I like this new Node X clasp and you know, the enhanced adjustability of the bracelet is a welcome thing. For $575, this does carry solid value for money, which is always, you know, always a good thing in today's watch market. But as far as the subjective negatives or criticisms go, I think the movement choice, although it is cheaper than some models that Seiko sells that carries an unregulated version of the caliber, it's just not an exciting pick. And watch collectors really enjoy the above average value that micro brands bring to the table. And don't get me wrong, this watch is bringing some good value uh, for money to the table, but the NH35 caliber is viewed as basic. And I would imagine there is a decent amount of collectors that would be prepared to spend a little bit more and get a Salida movement, or perhaps spend a similar amount. Again, the retail price is $575 and get a Miyota 90 series movement. But tell me what you think about that. I might be viewed as off base here. Lastly, at various times, as I've worn this example, I've noticed the defined points of the Clou de Perry grip on the crown at the nine o'clock position. And I think this is probably because I like to wear my watches a touch loose. I call it Bruce loose. I do not like wrist claustrophobia. And from time to time, as the watch head slides a little bit across the top of my wrist, I feel... Uh, I feel the nature, the abrupt nature of those points on the Clou de Perry grip, and that is not pleasant. But I recognize that is a tad nitpicky, and it will likely not happen to you, uh, again, if you don't wear your watches Bruce loose. Overall, this has been a nice experience to try this new sector deep from notice. This is not a sponsored review. I'm not being paid. I'm not getting a free watch or anything like that. I've tried to share the positives as well as the negatives here in an objective manner. So thank you to Wes and Jake for allowing me some time to try this and film this pre-embargo lift. I'll place all relevant links in the description of the video. Reach out with any questions you may have. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.